All right, here's the game of the year for our school, Capture the Flag Outdoors. For grades three to eight, you'll need two flags and a large playing area, and that's it. And all credit and thanks goes to Paul Groskoff. He's a friend and colleague of mine at our school. He brought this game this year, and uh, with his classes, with all the rules, modifications of taking the standard Capture the Flag and bringing it to phys ed class. So thanks, Paul. Every time I say we in this video, I actually mean him. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's important to find a good playing area large enough for 10 to 40 players approximately in there should work and if you have obstacles and hiding places those will always help but it will work if you just have a plain open field that's fine too it can work so we started off at the baseball diamond area so we had two diamonds and there's a path splitting them that was important and uh, one team would be on one half of course the other team on the other half in those boundaries and we found that teams like to hide often in the fitness park so hide their flag in the fitness park uh, if they were on that side and over by the buildings if they were on this side so it showed the a little bit of importance with obstacles now I'll get into the rules in a second here, but uh, we moved from the baseball diamonds to a forest or bush type area and uh, I wanted to show you this picture to talk about the flags. So Paul put together these flags using ski posts and he tied some uh, fluorescent scarves to it. And the rule we have with the flags is you can hide them anywhere, even up in trees and whatnot but uh, the, the color has to be seen so they can't bury it under or they can't like tuck it somewhere so you can't see the color and uh, yeah and we had one team would be on one half so kind of these scrawny trees on that side and the other team on that half and we'd switch of course after a time so both teams had both uh, areas so we're going to look now at a an overhead view and we have the path in the middle again and that's pretty important and as well you're gonna have a, a bench or some sort of a, an area you have to designate as a jail and we'll see about that in a sec as well so one team on one half the other team on the other half and they're going to hide their flags at the beginning they, they're spending a few minutes or not a few minutes 30 seconds to hide their flags no peeking so you gotta tell the, the teams to not look at the other team when they're hiding their flag because it ruins the fun obviously and uh, when they're done that you're gonna blow the whistle to start and the idea is to bring the flag the opposing team's flag find their flag capture their flag obviously in the name and bring it back to your side across the center line so that center line is super important and so this would almost never happen but if a player went onto the other team's half didn't get caught grabbed the flag and brought it back that lo that, that round would be over that would be it so of course that doesn't happen so easily so we'll reset it here and what happens if a player gets onto the other team's half they can get tagged so if you're on your own half you're safe on the other team's half you can get tagged so that pink player got tagged needs to go into the jail for two minutes that's the time in the jail and meanwhile the player who tagged that player also has to go to the jail but just tap the jail or tap the bench and then they can go back into play and that's important so that one player can't just tag a whole bunch of people at a time they can tag one player they've got to bring them to the jail or go to the jail tap the bench and then they're back in play and we had those uh, flags there's a boundary where you cannot guard so there's no puppy guarding so if you look at those flags maybe 10 feet or 15 feet away that's why you see no players are directly near that flag because you have to have a rule if everyone's just puppy guarding the flag the game doesn't go anywhere so if a player has gone across and grabbed the flag and is bringing it back to their team and they get tagged they have to drop the flag where it is it stays there it doesn't go back to the beginning it stays where they got tagged goes to the jail of course the player who tagged also goes and taps the bench and then they can go back into play that center line or the center path that's a free zone so anybody can go in there and there's no tagging allowed there so you can have as many players from the teams they can go there and whatnot um, and and be free in that area and move about as they want on the path if the game is taking too long if a team can't find the other flag or if it's just there's it's, you know time's running out you can yell a big free-for-all if you yell free-for-all that means there is no tagging so it's just a mass free-for-all everyone scatters even if they're in the jail they can run out of jail and just try and find that flag grab the flag and be the first team to bring the flag back across into their into their half and that's essentially the, the basic rules Paul also had an additional build to this which I had a lot of fun too is you put in a couple items so really small maybe bean bags or something and hide them as a teacher you can walk around and and drop them or hide them and those are the immunity items 
where if somebody throughout the round can find one of these items and hold on to it, so we see these bean bags here, if a player grabs one and holds on to it, then they are immune from being tagged. So that player could then enter the other team's half, and if they show the, the, the players, oh look, I have this the immunity item, then they can't get tagged. So they have a free range of finding that flag. And uh, that's it for the standard version of Capture the Flag for a phys ed class. Thanks again, Paul, and to the students. We had so much fun this year playing it. I suggest you try it out. And uh, if you've enjoyed this game, please subscribe for more games and visit physedgames.com. Thank you.